This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Are you guys excited to learn about WooCommerce? Woo! Yeah, Woo! That's right. <laughs> All right. So I am Ethan May, and this here is John Bishop, the one and only. And uh, we'll be talking to you guys a little bit tonight about developing with WooCommerce and WordPress. So just real quick. Uh, we have a link to the presentation here if you want to follow along on a laptop or a tablet or whatever you have. And also a link to the demo that we've built. And keep in mind, so the updates we're making as we go along here are on our local installation. They're not on the demo, so there may be discrepancies. Disclaimer. So yes. I'm over here so I'm closer to the mic. Um, so... We're, like I mentioned before, we're going to cover a lot in this talk. We're going to try and go pretty fast. So um, if you have questions, we'll do our best to answer them uh, quickly. Uh, but ultimately, we have a lot of stuff we want to cover. Ultimately, our goal is to give you guys the mindset and the tools to be able to explore and figure out a lot of the pieces yourselves. And ultimately, we're going to give you kind of a high level um, you know, look at how these pieces kind of come together where you look to make certain changes, and ultimately what WooCommerce is really capable of. Um, and just quickly, uh, Ethan and myself, we work together at an agency where we do all, all kinds of web, web builds. Uh, more recently, uh, a rather large e-commerce build that we were gonna do on Shopify, but we needed more control. So we ultimately brought it over to WooCommerce, and uh, it's, it's been great. Uh, the speed at which we can make changes has been amazing, and we've used it on other uh, on other sites as well. Um, but, but ultimately, we love WooCommerce, we love WordPress, uh, so that's why we wanted to share this all with you. Um, so half of this will be in the form of old school black and white slides, and the other half will be uh, actually digging in some code, looking at WooCommerce, and uh, playing around a little bit. All right, let's get started. So just generally speaking, with e-commerce and WordPress, there, is, there are a few keys here to think about. So first, you need to assess your business needs. Not all e-commerce installations are right for your business needs. WooCommerce is great for smaller e-commerce sites. Uh, it's not necessarily the most scalable, although depending on your you know, hosting situation, your database options, you may be able to make it scale more efficiently than others. But generally speaking, it's best for small e-commerce builds. Um, another key is as we're Getting more and more connected on our mobile devices, mobile is a big thing. Uh, accessing your site on a mobile device, making it easily digestible and easy to get to that cart page where you check out, is going to be key. Um, and that ties into the user experience as well. So if it's easy to use, easy to digest, maybe throw some of those visuals that we were talking about in the last presentation, uh, get some really good conversions there. Uh, and when we say small, we mean small uh, in the size of the site. Uh, as far as traffic goes, um, this the site we were working on. The client, uh, I think in one day, did, drove 1.2 million emails to the site. And we were able to scale up and accommodate that pretty easily. We only had, I think, nine products total on the site. Uh, it's just the way the WordPress taxonomy works and the way it gathers posts and then delivers them. Uh, the more posts you add, or the more products you add, uh, there's a really complex taxonomy in the back end. Uh, so it, it does become, become kind of sluggish within WordPress. And you could ramp it up, uh, but it gets expensive fast. I think we were up in the you know, four, $4,000, uh, I think, for half of the month to up, to up, to up the server, memcache, everything else. Um, so it was a little bit of an investment, uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, with a different platform, we could probably, we probably wouldn't have had to scale up as much as we did. So that ties perfectly into my next bullet here. Pricing may vary. So depending on your e-commerce platform, whether you go with WooCommerce or another e-commerce platform that integrates with WordPress out there, uh, the great thing about WooCommerce is that it's free. Um, but once you add in the necessary plugins that you may need, say subscriptions if you're trying to sell a magazine subscription or uh, anything else that might fit your needs, as well as your payment gateway, you have to keep that in mind. So we're not even going to be covering payment gateways in this presentation. Just throw, it out, throw that out there. That's a whole other uh, fish to fry. But uh, some of them are associated with different costs. So say you use Stripe. That's one that we're, we're familiar with. And we really like. 
and we like, yes. It's uh, been very cooperative. Uh, they take a little bit off the top there for each uh, purchase. So, moving on. So, why WooCommerce? Like we already mentioned, it's free. It's my favorite part, not gonna lie. Uh, it's really, really easy to use uh, and set up. Uh, literally out of the box, you have pretty much everything you need. It walks you through the installation process. There are a couple pages you need to create, but you could literally install it, add some products, and start selling things that day. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, it's, it's flexible and extendable. So they, they built it in a way where you know, it does work out of the box, but they allow you to configure every single component. And there's a couple different ways to configure things, and we'll go over that in more depth in a little bit. Um, but ultimately, it's something we wanted to show you guys, and it's that stat that I threw in the uh, in the actual meetup page description. Uh, this is by no means a, a science um, built with .com, but if you haven't checked it out before, it's it's a good way to get a, a general bearing of, of what's popular and what services sites are using. Um, so, oh, go. perfect. So yeah, out of the top 10,000 sites on the internet, so th these are sites that are. Uh, frequented, uh, frequented pretty regularly, um, you'll notice that WooCommerce does make up a, 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 at least a good percentage of that, especially considering um, you know, Magento and uh, OS Commerce and Demandware are kind of the more premium uh, e-commerce solutions. Uh, WooCommerce in that uh, chunk does pretty well. Um, and then if you bump that up to view WooCommerce uh, compared to the rest of the internet, um, it takes up a giant chunk um, it's, it's the largest chunk that you can actually distinguish from the rest of them. Uh, and this is mostly because of the ease of use. Uh, it's free. Anybody can really install it. Anybody can get a store up and running. But the good thing for you is because it's so popular, there are a lot of people playing around with it. There's a lot of people getting under the hood, messing around, trying to figure out what's possible. Ultimately, it means there's a large community behind it of people sharing information that ultimately can help you set this up faster. Um, what's one of the reasons I gravitated towards WordPress? It's been like 50% market share of all internet, of all, all websites right now. Um, the community is massive, so it's really easy if you have a problem to go and find an answer to it. Um, versus some of these newer platforms, which can be kind of a pain in the ass to work with. You might, um, but uh, but yeah, in general, uh, we love WooCommerce because of that, um, and uh, we just wanted to share those stats with you. Definitely check out BuiltWith.com if you haven't. You can check out the actual trends. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool to see kind of in the That's last pretty, couple months pretty incredible. Uh, what, what adoptions looked like. And honestly, that could be a change in built wits algorithm for all we know. Uh, but if it's not, it's pretty freaking cool. All right. Back to this. All right, so a little bit about WooCommerce plugins. Uh, I have a link if you guys are following along uh, for each of these plugins, as well as a link to all of the plugins that are offered on the WooCommerce site. Uh, we just wanted to call out a few more notable ones. Uh, one of them is advanced notifications. So uh, WooCommerce comes with a pretty decent set of emails that are generated, which send out to, say, the admin based on purchases or the customer. Uh, but advanced notifications allows you to get a lot more control over those emails that go out, as well as set up custom, um, custom emails to trigger based on different events. And there's a very wide variety of all the different events that WooCommerce includes. Uh, Amazon Payments, uh, I included that one because it's free. If you want to set up your store with Amazon, uh, it's an easy way to hook those two together and pay via Amazon. Facet WP, also free. It's basically an Amazon-like drop-down search functionality, which allows you to filter your products really easily within the page. Um, and a couple others, I don't, the other one I want to call out is WooCommerce subscriptions. We'll be showing you a little bit about that tonight. Um, it allows you to sell subscription-based products within WooCommerce. And then the last one there, WooCommerce HipChat, we just thought was very cool because we, uh, we use HipChat at work. It's a, just a chat communication platform. And you can actually have uh, events which happen in WooCommerce trigger little chat messages in HipChat. So that, we just thought that was neat. So yeah, check out the uh, all the plugins link up top later, uh, and you'll get a big list of tons of different plugins which could fit your needs. So um, we are going to cover, like I said, we're going to go over a lot. So we'll start off by walking through the Word, WordPress admin, specifically WooCommerce, um, go through some of the generated pages, 
and then we'll get into customizing it. Um, we'll walk through as many different use cases as we can come up with on the spot, and then we'll maybe take some questions about specific uh, optimizations and maybe how we would go about that or some resources that you guys can look into. Um, just out of curiosity, who here, regardless of WooCommerce or not, who here manages an e-commerce store? And who uses WooCommerce for that? Awesome. All right, All right cool. Uh, yeah, so forgive us while we tweak our desktop settings to make sure you can see what we're looking at. Oh, yes. Um, that is a good point. We're going to open... Uh, Sublime Text for the first time just to kind of see. For all you non-Mac familiar users, these are called spaces. We're going to be switching back Show and forth off. between Don't them. <laughs> Hopefully no one gets motion sickness. We're at the Microsoft and we should have been on the center. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can everybody read that? Is that a little too small? Easy to read? Bigger? 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 You good? In the back there? Good. Can we, can we see? All right. Okay. Where should we start? Well, let's start with the admin. That sounds good. And then we'll get into the code. So, just a little demo for the front of our store. We have a Woo demo, a beautiful setup, using lots of visual imagery here to draw our customers in. And uh, <laughs> we just, just added that. very creative product <laughs> names, by the way. Uh, so up here, we just have the categories and then the actual products, a basic pricing filter, uh, and search functionality. So very, very basic. We have not styled any of this. Uh, we're leaving it up to you guys to do the styling, but we will give you the tools to do that. So here we have our back end. Uh, this is the list of all the products. But let's start, say I've just activated WooCommerce. What's the first thing that's going to happen? Well, it's going to prompt you to say, oh, can WooCommerce set up WooCommerce pages? So if you go into pages here, you'll see that WooCommerce has set up this is the default sample page that comes with WordPress. WooCommerce sets up a few pages for me. So I have the front page, which is the welcome page, um, the cart page, the checkout page, and the account page. So the cart page contains all the products when you add them to the cart. Checkout page allows you to check out, pretty self-explanatory, and the my account page uh, allows your users to sign in to the front end and manage their account, their orders, what have you. If you've used older versions of WooCommerce, uh, you may have noticed they uh, basically trimmed the list of pages that it generates. It used to generate something like seven to nine pages. Uh, they, so they've kind of narrowed that down to these three or four, and now they use what they call endpoints, and we can overwrite those using uh, hooks, Word, uh, WooCommerce hooks, which are really just WordPress filters and actions. They just decided to call them hooks. It makes it really confusing when you're trying to find them. Uh, so we tried to link to them, and we came with a bunch of examples for you. Uh, but ultimately, if you can't find what you're looking for on these pages, if you're looking at the page templates, um, that's when you're going to resort to the hooks. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. Yep. So WooCommerce uses one main template file in order to display all of their information, and that is called WooCommerce.php. So if, this, if your theme... If you're creating a custom theme or the theme that you've downloaded does not have a WooCommerce.php file, uh, your theme will not support WooCommerce at that time. So we've gone ahead and created this WooCommerce.php file. And you'll notice here one main difference between this template and, say, a regular page template. We'll just compare here. Index and WooCommerce. All right, let's try page. So, you'll notice these are very, very similar. And we're developing this on top of, just for side note, uh, Foundation Press. It's a very great starter theme uh, if you're going to be doing some custom styling. Uh, Anyone know what that area is called? The WordPress loop. There we go. Hey, someone's got it. So, we are in the WordPress loop here, and you'll notice this is have post, whereas this is WooCommerce content. So, this basically says to WooCommerce, load all of the co content from the store into this page. Whereas this says just load whatever page or post or whatever is displaying. So one of the most important things when you're setting up these themes is you need to set up the loop correctly to include WooCommerce content. And that will tell the theme, hey, I need to load all of the products or categories or cart or whatever have you within this page. Here. So so just to kind of step back, um, if you're using WooCommerce, there are tons of themes that have WooCommerce support already. 
uh, most of them through Woo themes, but there are tons on uh, other third-party uh, distributors. Uh, what we're talking about now is if you decide to use your own theme that doesn't like native, have native WooCommerce support. And there are really a couple ways to support it. One is by including the single template file. The other is by including the entire WooCommerce template uh, part hierarchy, in which overwrites all of the core functionality. So what we're walking through right now assumes you're working with your own theme that doesn't have that native support. Um, and there's a little flag people that, you can, that uh, theme authors use so that when you're going to download the theme, you should, it should say WooCommerce, or this, this theme supports WooCommerce right in it. This is a little flag that people add to their theme, so it shouldn't be a question. Um, but everything from here forward is assuming we're working with a custom theme. This theme has no support for WooCommerce, and we're adding it. That's correct. So we've created our WooCommerce.php file. Um, let's talk about if you want to customize some of the specific templates within WooCommerce. So we're going to have to go back to our main screen and browse through here to Woo, WP Content, Themes, uh, oops, actually, Plugins. Have we, have we done anything yet? Is, is right now it's just using the WooCommerce.php? Yep, everything's using WooCommerce.php. So just as a, this site is currently fully functional as an e-commerce store with just that single file. Um, we lose a lot of the flexibility of being able to move specific components of the store uh, outside of that, their container. because so we're basically saying this is good for everything. So everything has the same sidebar now. Everything's within that same template. But we're going to take it a step further now and <coughs> copy over some WooCommerce files that allow us to really change the individual components of each page and really customize and take ownership of this WooCommerce installation. So... Uh, it's very simple. You just have to copy either the specific templates that you want to work with, if you know what they are, or the entire folder into your theme. So we're just going to copy the entire folder for ease of use here into our theme, which is called Custom Theme, very original. Create a new folder called WooCommerce. And as I've said, copying all this, pasting into here. And now, if I go back to my text editor and edit, say, the product archive page, it actually gives you directions in the template file up here. Override this template by copying it to your theme slash WooCommerce, etc. I can directly modify just the specific product archive page of WooCommerce. So, let's see. I'm just going to put a very basic H1 in there just to demonstrate the functionality. This is the product archive. With any luck, no luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just see the content. <laughs> the product content. So now if I go to a single product, it also is not displaying. So sometimes it's hard to find out where exactly that is the, hardest the part. template part we're working with. The um, only thing you might want to try actually is deleting the WooCommerce.php. That's a good I idea. It's using that. So it's possible that the WooCommerce.php file is actually overriding everything else, which it definitely was making a big difference. So you can see yeah. now that I've deleted this file, it is using the basic WooCommerce templates to actually display this page. And there's very there's no framework for anything. So and now what we do as an alternative to that WooCommerce.php file is we would go and edit those specific template files within the folder. And that allows us to, make, to really customize each page um, so that they don't necessarily look like they're all part of the, this doesn't look like they're all part of the same container. They could all serve very different purposes, um, have different sidebars, have different headers, have different content. If you're creating squeeze pages, you can remove everything else on one page, and then the next page, you can add a bunch of stuff to upsell them. Um, there's endless options as far as how you can customize this, uh, you know, at least customize the purchase flow. Um, so go back to, uh, let's put the WooCommerce.php file back in there and talk yes. a bit about styles quickly. Sure. may have to reset my repo here. So who here knows CSS? Nice. 
Um, who here has used Google Chrome to edit CSS? Cool. So for the rest of you, hopefully this is a little, a little helpful. Um, we're gonna mess around with the CSS a little bit. Ultimately, there are two ways to override, uh, override the, the base functionality. But one of the first things you're gonna wanna change when you're uh, basically using WooCommerce is the purple. It's everywhere. Uh, they love it, and it's okay. I mean, uh, if you wanna own it though, you're gonna wanna add custom buttons, custom sliders, custom headers. You're gonna wanna change some of the padding in some of the boxes. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do a little live CSS demo. It's probably a little bit safer than a live mm -hmm. uh, you know, PHP code editing demo. Yes. So, um, oh, I'll start with disabling the default WooCommerce styles. So want me to do it. Let's do it. Yes. We'll start there. So, if we go into our library here, we have a WooCommerce overrides. Uh, this is basically just a functions.php file split into multiple different files. You'll see in the library here. There's a few different ones which are specific to those uh, file names, but. It's all just, if, if in basic terms, think of it as one functions.php file. So these are all functions that are hooking into WordPress. Uh, this first function here would be good to, just good to know. If you're developing a custom theme, uh, this line says, we are adding support for WooCommerce officially. So it'll get that annoying notice to go away that says, oh, uh, this theme doesn't support WooCommerce. That will remove that. It's a simple thing if you're making sites for your clients. Don't forget to put that in there or close it first, because otherwise, you create the site, you hand, them off, hand it off, you give them their credentials, and the first thing they see when they get in there is this theme doesn't support WooCommerce. So it's, just get rid of it, it's really easy. So uh, WooCommerce has three different style sheets that they load uh, to control the styles of the site. So the first one we're gonna uncomment here is the general styles. We'll say, it actually says here, remove the gloss. I didn't even know you, I didn't even know you can do it this way. Yeah. That's cool. Pretty magical. So if we go back, that will get rid of all that purple. And you'll see we have now a nice blue, as well as uh, list styles. Awesome. Got rid of the slider too, huh? Yeah, so our slider seems to have completely disappeared. And if we inspect that, yeah, we get So nothing. this is just right-click inspect element in Google Chrome. It allows you to view the generated source of the page. Not the, not the, it's different than doing view source HTML, because JavaScript changes a lot of stuff on, on page. So when you do right click and inspect element, you're able to view the generated source, all the stuff that JavaScript added on top of your regular site. And it allows you to click into specific elements and pieces of the site where you can go and see the actual styles that are associated with it. Um, and if you haven't done this before, go to your favorite site, any website, click on an element and you can go in there and change the size. You can add your logo to google.com, just for you. But it, it seems silly, but it's a great way to learn the basics of coding, see how other people are doing it. Um, I'm a geek about it. I think instead of cursive, you should be learning HTML and CSS. Uh, these days, it's more valuable, honestly. Um, but services like If This Then That and all these API mashup things, like you could do all kinds of crazy things on the internet. If you don't know HTML and CSS, you're falling behind. It's such an easy thing to learn. This is a great way to get there. So just to make it a little more pretty, we're gonna leave those commented in. The rest of these control the layout and then the small screen styles. We'll just uncomment those to show you what it's like. Um, so this broke, er, not broke per se because it was intentional, but it removed all of the layout styles which were telling this grid to set up in that specific way. So you would do, you would remove these styles if you were going to say override them with your own custom CSS or I like to keep them in because then I can just add on top of them. And then this last line here, just for reference, if you That's key. Like, unless, remove them all. Unless you're hiring someone else to do this for you and you're making small changes, you'll most likely want to keep the style sheet as is and just add your styles on top. Um, it's a little bit of extra load uh, for, this, for the, the actual browser, um, but if you're only making small changes, it's, it's negligible, it's, it's tiny. Um, if you're going to be developing your own theme, then you want to look into actually unsetting those specific ones, or uh, I'm not sure what it, is off the top, what it is off the top of my head, but there's a, a variable you can define globally that, that basically tells it to disable all WooCommerce styles. And you can copy the WooCommerce styles into your theme and use that as a base and just go to town. The idea is you want to get the stuff out of, never change changes in the plugin. Everyone knows that, right? Never make changes in a plugin. 
always take the changes outside of the plugin into your theme, your functions.php, or create your own plugin that you control. Because if you make changes to a plugin and you upgrade, you lose all those changes and you want to upgrade. So make sure you're doing all your changes in your theme that you're not going to upgrade or something that you own that you don't have to worry about losing over time. Should I go through and make some changes to the CSS right here? Yeah. Yeah. CSS changes. So I'll start on a product page. This guy's a ninja. Quick with the CSS. So I like to do it in line here in the uh, in the inspector. So we'll just add some padding. So this is cool. Like you see this right here. So. Normally, everything else is in other CSS files, or WooCommerce.css, Pagination.css. Inspector style sheet is based, it's a local style sheet that lives in the browser now, where every time you press that little plus button, it's adding styles to that local style sheet. So you can add all your styles there, as long as you're in one session and don't refresh the page, add all your styles there, and you can physically click on that link. Um, let's do it. Do it. And then it'll bring you to a, a little your a list of all of your styles, so you can copy that into your style sheet. So I'll just do that for example. They're turning this into an, its own integrated development environment. Honestly, like you can actually edit the files themselves here and save it and overwrite other files. You can drag other files into the workspace that'll overwrite the files that are on page. Just the stuff you can do with this now are amazing. So definitely play around with it more if you can. So I'll just give a quick example. I cr coded that style in the inspector there paste it into my style sheet. I'm writing this in SCSS, which is uh, not quite the same as CSS. You'll need a compiler to do that. I'm not going to go into that right now. We are running our... Grunt? Game. Anybody? Grunt? What? Yeah. Developer! Hey! Uh, and now when we refresh, we see we have our little bit of padding around this box. Much better. At least the description box. At we least. Use, uh, so, I mean, we could go on, but... It's basically as simple as if you're wanting to customize these styles, you can literally right click, inspect the element, click the plus button. You'll see the style creates there. And say we want to change the background to red yep. because we're really energetic about adding this thing to the card here. Very simple to do that. Copy it, move it to And then those went back to purple after we clicked it because it refreshed the page. We lost our style locally. We would have had to copy it into our actual style sheet to keep it. Uh, no, I think the WooCommerce style sheet is still in the plugin. We're gonna any styles that we create here, we're gonna copy into our themes style sheet. Okay. That's right. So I'm working within. This is the SCSS folder, but it compiles into the CSS folder, which is just our themes overall CSS. SCSS is just a pretty way of writing CSS. It allows us to write it in an organized way with variables and stuff like that, and ultimately it compiles to and becomes regular CSS. Right. Awesome. So any any questions so far before we get into overriding functionality? Well, I'm just curious. Before you were mentioning the site that like, was costing two thousand a month, I was wondering how many visitors that was. Uh, I'm not even sure that that one that one day the spike was insane. The I do know the open rate on the email was eighty five percent, which didn't help our case. Eighty five percent of one point two million. One point two of one point two million. Um, when I do know the average traffic to the site was at around 600 on its own. Um, and they were only driving traffic to it through, I believe, paid media and a, um, a call out on the homepage of the site. Uh, and that was it. Um, and every, the rest was all, it was actually, I think it was delisted <laughs> from search engines as well, or at least discouraged from search engines. So it was a paid search play in the homepage. And now they're going to move, roll it out so that it's, uh, publicly accessible, but yeah. So just before we switch gears here, uh, one last note about WooCommerce template parts and editing WooCommerce templates. Don't be afraid when you've copied this WooCommerce folder into your theme to go around and play inside of these files. So this may look like a bunch of nonsense to a lot of you out there, but once we get down into this main loop area here, you'll see the actual HTML, it might start to make a little bit more sense. Don't be afraid to comment out some of these lines and see what it does. Because that's the best way to really learn about what these template files are doing 
and what you need to be customizing in the end. Because we can go over a ton of different implementations, but they may not be right for you and your store. Yeah, I, I actually learned PHP through WordPress. I'm um, just playing around with it. I didn't know before. I taught myself off a calculator before that. No formal training. It's, it's not, PHP is pretty, pretty easy to get into if you take the time to learn the basics of, of programming. Uh, there's just the stigma around programming that turns everybody off. You know, they think it's hard. Um, it's really powerful and really easy to get into. So definitely get, get it going using the base themes, the base plugins. Then just start messing around. Remove stuff, see what happens. Change things, see what happens. Same with style sheets and uh, HTML. Just make tiny changes and see what happens. Uh, you'd be surprised at, at how natural and easy it actually feels sometimes and how logical it, it is. And that's why I love it. I, it's just logical. It's like little brain games for adults. It's just fun. Um, so definitely, definitely uh, do that. And you can always undo. That's the, that's the best part. You can undo all these changes if you... you can almost always undo. If something is broken. Go for it. Use, a, use version management. <laughs> version control. Version control. <laughs> uh, what'd you do? How do we go back? No. Not that. Not that. Or that. What am I... I don't use a Mac. You can't tell. <laughs> Let's get back to the uh, sublime text. Ah, okay, okay. This is a learning process here. All right. Three fingers touchpad to the left. Oh, hell yeah. And three fingers to the right to go back. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. um, where, where are... Okay, cool. So... What would you want to go over? Go for it. These? I went over the first two. You could go over the... Uh, the Ajax card updater, if you want. Cool. That's the first one. Yeah. So, like you mentioned before, um, there's only so much you can edit right out of the box of WooCommerce. And at first, it's a r little bit frustrating. That's why we're going to spend most of the time on it. Um, it's not as easy as just adding. So if you just add the content snippet and create the, the WooCommerce.php page, it's great. It's fully functional, but you're... It looks, it's the exact, it looks a certain way, and you can't really change it. Um, so then you get into copying over the theme structure like we did before, and after some testing, you finally get it working, and you can make certain changes there, but then even then you're going to hit a wall, and there are certain things you won't be able to change. Uh, if you really want to change how WooCommerce works, um, I guess some examples from the recent project we did, uh, we needed to add some extra fields, to the registration page, um, something you couldn't do through the templates, but you could do pretty easily through the overriding functionality um, because you need to have one thing that adds it and one thing that processes it. Um, we use that to add an opt-in field. Um, we were able to add a source field that kind of lives in the back end and it keeps track of where you came from and it doesn't pass off that source field until the very end when, can, when the person actually makes the purchase and ties it to that order. Um, it allows us to just track where people are coming from in paid media. Um, and there were a couple other things we did to disable the flow uh, through the site because it was a, subscrip a subscription site. People could only land on one of three landing pages. Once they landed on one of those landing pages, that's the only landing pages they were ever served. They couldn't navigate to another one. Um, so there was something cookie that was redirecting them back. Uh, once they add something to their cart, it brought them straight to the checkout. So there wasn't, there, were no there wasn't an intermediary step that was kind of just annoying just to be there. Um, we had customiz customizations around the uh, privacy policy. This client was very uh, picky about the flow for the privacy policy. So we had to make two pop-ups that one led to the other and it was gross and terrible, but we could do it. We could physically do it because of WooCommerce. And we fought, but we had to do it and we did it. Um, so, and then ultimately, you, if you're logged in, you have to log in and create an account. We didn't want them to be able to purchase again. We wanted them to only make one purchase uh, and then they would make their payments over whatever payment plan they chose, and uh, ultimately that would be it. And we're still working out some other systems that allow us to prevent people from purchasing from the same location. Um, and then reporting was especially important for this client. So there's a lot we had to do on the, uh, on the upfront just to make sure we're getting all the correct data and it was ready and in the right place because the subscriptions module is a little bit funky in how it works. Um, and then we had to build custom reporting where we built this custom thing where they can change all these settings and get a daily report or a failed order report and all kinds of custom stuff. Um, but ultimately, overrides allowed us to do all of that. 
Um, one of the first things you're going to want to add to your theme, if you're using your own theme, is a cart to the top right hand corner. It's just it's a very familiar user pattern, and I'm I'm big on that. I like to push uh, you know, design patterns and, and user user experience patterns as much as we can, but there are certain pad patterns that just work. So you start there, and then you start testing and optimizing, and you know maybe you discover something better that works. Um, but at the very least, you're going to want to add that cart. Uh, so this is a little snippet we found. Did you want to talk about the snippet? Sure. You found it. Sure. So this is actually, you can find this snippet here at this link. Uh, and there's two parts to doing this. One, you have to go into your header, or your template part, which includes your header, and add this link here. We have a, a list with cart contents. So they actually provide you on the site with this big, long snippet, which you just paste into your header, or wherever you may want it to show up. It doesn't have to be the header, as long as it's formatted in this style. Uh, with all these different class names and links, uh, the function will properly pick it up. And then you need the function here. So uh, it adds a filter to whenever the uh, a product is added to the cart and tells it uh, to update the counter in the link to be whatever number of products are in the cart. So let's test that in action here on our site. Uh, you can actually see it up here, but I'll remove that and go to the home page. So I've run out of product names. Let's try that. And I scrolled so you couldn't see it. So if you notice, keep your eye up here. I will click add to cart and it will magically count up without refreshing the page. So this, uh, I included in the sidebar, a sidebar checkout, which is included with WooCommerce. But say you didn't want to use that, or you wanted to have that extra uh, notice up there for your customer, um, it's just a very helpful snippet to have on hand. Then you can easily click it, navigate straight to your cart. And as Bish was saying, it's a very familiar user interface. Um. And uh, for the sake of time, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to go through each bit of code, but just talk a little bit about some of the things um, that you can do. Uh, so obviously, this is, this is actually the snippet we used. Um, so I'm still in there. Uh, you can do things like intercept data and, and pass it on to third-party systems. So say you're doing a Salesforce integration and you want to pass off all of your your new users uh, or registered users to to Salesforce, you can intercept that data and push it off. Um, there are a bunch of different ways you can edit the messages that happen throughout WooCommerce. Uh, anytime you purchase something or uh, it's asking for a coupon or it's notifying you of things added to carts, removed from cart, uh, there are a lot of default messages that come with WooCommerce and it's one of the first things a lot of people want to change, either the look and feel of that box or the contents of it. Uh, all of those can be overwritten, and here's a sample of a couple of those. Pretty simple, small chunks of code. If you really wanted to, uh, a developer can abstract a lot of this functionality into a WordPress plugin and build uh, some, like a back-end admin panel so that this can be managed to the back-end. And a lot of people have already done that. A lot of these snippets have already been encapsulated in WordPress plugins. So if you are strapped for cash and you're trying to just get it done, uh, you can probably find a lot of this functionality in WooCommerce itself. I mean, in uh, the w WordPress plugin repository itself. Um, otherwise, there are tons of resources out there. Uh, a quick search brought up a bunch of posts. One of them was this uh, wpexplorer.com post, best WooCommerce snippets for WordPress. It was a two-part series of all the different snippets you could add. Uh, uh, random stuff. You could do everything from changing the PayPal logo and the PayPal checkout functionality uh, to changing how the bread clump, bread, the bread clumps, the bread crumbs look. Um, you can do stuff that automatically, as you add stuff to the cart, it automatically directs you to the checkout page. Um, custom currencies. It's time to get off. That's awesome. yeah. <laughs> it's a nice serenade. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, very nice way to say you're done. <laughs> that was a total accident. I just got this phone. It's sad. I have that problem all the time. 
Um, you know, one thing that looks kind of clunky actually is the, the reviews on the products. If you have a smaller site, um, reviews are great. People are using them. If no one's using them, so it's poor social proof because it shows that nobody likes your stuff. Uh, <laughs> or, or bad reviews, even worse. Like no one's buying it, nobody likes it. So you know, I would put the product out there a little bit first, see how people are doing kind of organically in your communities, and then maybe turn it on once you know you have a little bit of traction. Um, to see how people are feeling. You, you do want to own that content. I'd love to own that content and have it on site. Uh, but, but by default, it looks kind of meh. So it's one of the things you can turn off, I think both through the back end or through a plugin, um, but also through a small chunk of code. And WooCommerce does give you a lot of control over these different settings in the settings panel. Uh, if you're new to WooCommerce, I'd recommend going first thing, once you install it, go to the settings panel and click through every tab every link in there so that you can figure out what the settings and options that are available to you are. Because then you'll know, okay, I need to find this custom functionality, and then you can Google search and find that specifically. Yep. And then for the developers who are curious, uh, so we we had to build a custom plugin like <coughs> that, that allowed our client to export subscription data and order, like subsequent order data um, within time frames. So then we had to become familiar with the, the WooCommerce kind of taxonomy and schema, and it sucks. Uh, basically what's happening is uh, all of the actual orders are just uh, stored in the WP post table using an orders post type. Uh, it stores some of the information that it needs in post meta, so pretty normal there. Um, but then they went on and they've added uh, a, couple other a couple extra tables to the database, which few plugins do, this is one of them, uh, BB Press and Buddy Press for others um, that keep track of line items for that specific order. So one line item might be tax, while another is shipping, while the other is general order information. And that's broken up into uh, two tables: one that keeps track of the order uh, post ID mapping, and then another one that keeps track of all the possible meta values that could go in there. And there's everything from the the checkout response itself to the line items themselves, so the subtotals, the totals, the tax, all that stuff. Um, so then having to go in, and then there's different order statuses too, especially when dealing with the subscription plugin. Uh, so when you go in, you have to, if you're trying to pull this data manually, you have to connect the post table to the post meta, to the items meta, to the items table, um, and it's gross. Uh, but it is possible there's an exporter plugin, I think it's called like WooCommerce Exporter Pro or something like that. Mm -hmm that has, a, has something in it that was close to what we needed, so we grabbed that and then we added, we did, I think we, all, we ended up with a SQL statement with 40 joins um, to, oh, yeah. get, to get the, our one uh, output that we needed. Um, it was gross. But we couldn't, we, and that was the problem with, with WooCommerce and its taxonomy is if we tried to loop through each product and dump it out into a CSV, we couldn't. It timed out once it got like 100 in. And we're at the point now where we have, I think, 2,000 orders where every order gets processed every month. So every, every month it's duplicating itself. So we're six months in now, that's 12,000 orders in the database. Uh, so trying to pull all 12,000 orders using the WordPress loop is near, near impossible. And that's what we were trying to do essentially before. So that join allows us to kind of work backwards from the items order meta and create a single statement that gives us all the output we need. Um, which is tricky because it's, it's all in post meta tables. It's broken out into key value pairs, so it's that's where you need the joins to get and get it all into one one column and one row. Uh, so that's that's the reason uh, I'd be cautious about trying to do WooCommerce at scale. It's absolutely possible. We did it. It wasn't too bad. We learned some things along the way. Um, there's some things we would do a little bit differently. I think when it comes to how we built out that port reporting initially. Um, and just the, the general scheme of the database and, and how we set it up, or the, or the server and how we set it up. But ultimately, it allowed us to kind of get uh, a, a subscription platform up and running in less than a month. Less than a month. Um, that could then handle that 1.2 million email blast. And that was only one email blast, there were others. That was just the one that we remember. Um, so yeah, so for sake of time, like I said, we, there's a lot of pieces here. I think we covered a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, we had much more to cover in our, <laughs> in our yeah. walkthrough. Well, I think we got through pretty much everything. Yeah, we did. We're going to put 
uh, we'll put the slides online. We'll put the project uh, up so you can navigate through. Uh, to what extent? Are we doing it on GitHub or? The slides are online. Uh, you we'll got the, the link site. right here and the demo is right there as well. Uh, and I'm going to add one more link for the Git repo. Awesome. That's the good stuff. So you could actually check out our source code and see exactly what we've done. Take our snippets right from our code. Um, Just don't steal our plugins, bro. That's all we yeah, ask. that would be nice. That would be nice. We some of them. There are some premium plugins in there. Maybe yes. Yeah. Get them all. Get them all. They're hot. Let's find it. So yeah, for the next uh, however long we have questions, we'll answer questions. Yeah. Is there an easy way to find out what template? Um, so there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, on an older version of WooCommerce, well, give me I, a new version. yeah, it's a new version. I'm not really sure. But beyond going in and adding some text to the top of each one, just just to get a bearing. Um, they also, if you go to the WooCommerce documentation, they break it out and they talk about what template does what. So, you know, with that, that should be enough to to tell you exactly where you need to make your changes. Um, and there are probably also ways to analyze the global WordPress query variable to see what's actually getting passed into that page to see ultimately what's going to get requested. That's a little more advanced, but at least the documentation will have a hierarchy of what gets called where. Great, thanks. Yep. Um, you guys are the code guys, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not a plugin developer or a theme developer. Um, but I just want to sort of emphasize the other side of the equation. You've done a great job to show that power of what you're able to do with some customization. Uh, it is also incredibly easy to build a relatively robust store for a small business without going there at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Part of it, for those of you who aren't coders <laughs> or don't want to hire a coder, uh, there are a lot of teams out there that are WooCommerce integrated, and there are a lot of plugins that can do a lot of the functions some of which you already mentioned. Yep. So I just wanted to mention that for those of you that might have been you know, a little intimidated by looking at code, which frankly I am, um, it's possible to do a lot with it without going into that. Yeah. The only thing to add to that is I believe you would have to add at least that WooCommerce.php page. Um, cause if that, it wasn't already there. If it wasn't already there, yeah. Because um, that, that's ultimately what WooCommerce is going to look for and use. Otherwise, it's going to default to its own stuff, which is going to look like it did when we had that little intermediate issue. You don't, you don't need to add anything. You don't need I to add anything. You do it all with configuration. You don't have to touch code at all to get WooCommerce up and running. If you, if you have a better. WooCommerce compatible yeah. theme. Exactly. If you have a WooCommerce compatible theme. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, means yeah. it has that WooCommerce yeah. page. Yeah, yeah. to have that, they have to add that little flag that says it's WooCommerce compatible, which basically means you don't have to do anything you use out of the box. And there, you can go to WooThemes.com. Uh, it's the people who make WooCommerce. Tons of uh, WooCommerce compatible themes there. There are also a ton of WooCommerce compatible themes um, in ThemeForest as well as in the WordPress.org repository itself. Yep. I'd like to apologize about my phone. <laughs> so, to go, but, um, so we use the subscription plugin, I guess, and we've had a lot of problems with it. We have a 1995 offer and then three following payments every 30 days. Kind of scared of what you said the limits to this are. So, so we're not nervous. So you're not nervous about okay. because because we because we can scale as needed based on memory consumption. So if we notice everything's are getting sluggish, uh, we can make changes on the server side that will kind of counteract that, um, and we can continue scaling on that end as much as we need to. So that's why we're not nervous, um, and ultimately the scale we were dealing with, we only went probably halfway up and that was that chunk. So like, and we went a little bit overboard just to be safe. We didn't know what it was going to look like. So you, it, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, just for about how many subscriptions do you think you have, like active subscriptions? Uh, well, during the testing phase, uh, one, uh, three out of every 10 orders had the, the trial thing yep. spread out over four months. So as we scale up by you know, magnitude more than that, we should hit 2,000 like next month. Yeah, you should be fine. You should be fine. Yeah. Okay. We have it, so since then we've, we've backed off and we're running on a, I'm pretty sure we're running on a small uh, uh, 882 on uh, AWS. 
uh, which is a, which is which is relatively small. It's only like three steps above one of the basic ones, and there's probably like ten steps. Is so there only one subscription plugin. There's the subscription plugin. It, it's it's so widely that's, supported. That's, that's the only one there are a lot of plugins that integrate in with it. Yep. Um, the only thing I'm curious, uh, what's your what's the fail rate look like with that with process? <laughs> well, that's not, you didn't want to get in the payment processors, so I didn't bring that up. Okay. We have a problem with Stripe, which is not sophisticated enough to judge a prepaid card from a debit. Yes, uh, and it, it can it distinguish. It tries anyways. What's that? It can distinguish. If you look at the logs, it actually knows it's prepaid. It still tries and fails anyways. Well, that's a problem. We have like angry customers that we don't even find out about because it automatically yeah. negs them and so then they call us saying, I swear to God, I'm not using a prepaid. Yeah. To let everyone else in on this conversation, basically, <laughs> uh, this problem. is a big problem that we had too, and we've, we, we've come up with a fix. It's not the prettiest solution, um, but when you're, when you're dealing with 2,000 subscriptions and we're, you send them in one big batch, it still distributes it throughout the day the best it can, but there are a number of factors that the payment processors look at when they're trying to figure out if something's fraud or not. Um, it, everything from the location uh, to the card itself, the number of times it's been declined, the number of orders being processed at the same time, the time of day. There's a, the, the problem is the payment processors don't know exactly what it is. All they know is it failed, or, or even better, 90% of our, our failed orders are just general card declined. And a third of those are prepaid cards. So those I can say, okay, uh, you know, right, it was around right, Christmas time when we launched. Right. We that makes launched. sense. Yeah. Um, but then the rest of those, are, they should work. So what, we, what we've done is we've built a, a, a little piece of functionality that we're, we're optimizing and fixing now that automatically looks at all the failed orders and reprocesses them two days later. And we're able to bring our fail rate from about 25%, which is terrible, down to, I think, 6 to 7%, which is about industry average for uh, recurring, recurring subscription plugins. Um, and it's literally just manual reprocessing. And WooCommerce doesn't make that easy, unfortunately. There's no easy way to batch reprocess. So we, we find ourselves writing code that manages this, um, what's, what's it called, the action manager? Or action scheduler. Action scheduler. So it uses this functionality called the action scheduler. It's like a modification of the built-in cron job to go through and, and do small batches of orders at a time rather than all the orders at once. So we actually simulate that ourselves, and we, we recreate that action scheduler. Um, so the onus is on WooCommerce, not Stripe. Right? It's on WooCommerce, unfortunately. Stripe can't do anything. And we've, we've tried to get Stripe, Stripe on the, the phone, the and they won't, they won't. What? Isn't Stripe the one making the ultimate decline, the ultimate call? No, it's, it's, it's the, the banks. The banks are making the ultimate decline. Right, but Stripe can only work with the information that it has. 